Welcome back to another Kicked Up Chemistry. Today we're going to do an experiment in which we're going to investigate the properties of metals. In particular, we're going to study the interaction between lead, zinc, copper, and then I have some solutions here set up that consist of silver nitrate, so silver ions, copper ions, magnesium ions, uh, lead nitrate, so some lead ions, and then hydrogen in the form of sulfuric acid. So the download is available if you are actually enrolled in my class called Single Replacement Reactions. If you're not, just make a note down in the comments or send me an email and I'll be more than happy to send you a copy of the actual lab. Now all of these metals oxidize readily, which means that they react with oxygen. So what I did is I took some sandpaper and I cleaned off the lead the zinc and the copper so that way I expose the bare metal and it doesn't have to try to get through that oxide. So I have six test tubes set up and we're going to look at the interaction between the solid metal and the aqueous metal and figure out which one is more reactive or less reactive and from that create what's called an activity series. So in test tube number one I'm going to put a little piece of copper Again, I've already sanded these so they're nice and shiny and that way I've got the oxidation off. In the second test tube, I have some lead. In the third test tube, a piece of zinc. In the fourth one, also a piece of zinc. And then in the fifth test tube, a piece of copper. And in the last one, again zinc. So I have three pieces of zinc, two pieces of copper, one piece of lead in each of the test tubes, and then I'm going to add the solutions to them. Now, a lot of times with these reactions, they're not instantaneous. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. So once I actually add all the solutions, we'll look for any incidents or evidence of a chemical reaction, and then I'll fast forward through through the magic of editing so we don't have to wait the entire 10 minutes and then we'll try to figure out well exactly uh, which one is more reactive and then we can fill out our chart so we're going to have our evidence of chemical reactions and then figuring out here after we go through we'll kind of work through together and figure out the chart of greater and lesser activity and it kind of walks you through to figure out that activity series so in the first test tube here, I'm going to add some silver nitrate to my piece of copper. The second one, I have some copper nitrate. To the third test tube with the zinc, I have some lead nitrate. the fourth test tube there I have some magnesium sulfate commonly known as Epsom salt and we have some sulfuric acid with copper and finally some sulfuric acid to the zinc Now, I put a white background on there to try to make it so you can see it a little bit better, but I will move the camera closer we can see. But definitely already we can see in this last test tube, test tube number six, an evidence of a chemical reaction. There are bubbles going on in there, and it appears that the zinc is turning uh, more of a blackish color. So let me move the camera. All right, now that I've got the camera moved closer, we can definitely see bubbles down here on the zinc. Uh, the rest of them uh, looks like we got some reaction starting, but what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to wait about 10 minutes and then see for sure what evidence of chemical reactions that we have. All right, our 10 minutes are up, so let's take a look at the reactions and see if we have evidence of chemical reactions here. 
Remember this first test tube contained a piece of copper and silver nitrate and you can see all this shiny stuff that's grown on the copper and if we look down here at the bottom of it it's, it's starting to turn blue. Whereas this solution contained copper nitrate and lead and we can see that it's much lighter colored than it was before and if we turn this we could see that our lead looks noticeably different as well so it looks kind of like something kind of growing on there same thing in number three with the zinc and the lead nitrate so we could see all of these crystals growing on to the lead so it looks like that we have definitely have a reaction in test tube one in test tube two and test tube three so we have a color change in addition to the color change we also have these crystals growing on there a precipitate being formed same thing in number two and number three now in number four there's nothing absolutely nothing so between the zinc and the magnesium sulfate nothing's happened in this one here so we had copper and sulfuric acid and so nothing has happened in this one either other than the copper is really nice and shiny now huh? now in the last one this is the one that reacted pretty much instantaneously and we can definitely see bubbles and a reaction going on so the hydrogen gas being generated from the reaction between the sulfuric acid and the zinc in there. So now that we have those, we can go ahead and start filling out our sheet. All right, now let's go ahead and record our evidences of reaction. So uh, different things that indicate that a chemical reaction took place. So we had a color change and crystals form. For the second one with the copper nitrate and the lead, same thing. We had a color change. It almost looked like moss growing on there. So we'll put a uh, mossy growth. For the third one here then, we had the zinc and the lead nitrate. And again, uh, in this case, it looked like we had a change. So we had a mossy growth again. Not too much of a color change in that one though. They're both colorless. This one we had no reaction. This one we had no reaction. And then the zinc and the sulfuric acid, we had bubbles. And the bubbles continued, so that's why we're pretty sure that's a chemical reaction and not a physical reaction. Just that when I poured it in, there were extra bubbles in there and they came out of the solution, kind of like carbonated pop. Now, how we fill out the table down here is we're only comparing the metals in hydrogen. So we ignore these nitrates. That was just to get it into solution. So that way we had ions in our solution. And it's not H2, it's just going to be H positive. And if there was a reaction, it means that the metal was more powerful than this metal and it was able to kick it out. Again, you can watch my video about uh, different reaction types and single replacement reactions on YouTube on Kicked Up Chemistry. And I explain all how the single replacement reactions work in there. So the greater activity then down here is going to be copper. And then the lesser activity was the silver because the copper was able to come over, kick the silver out of the solution, and take its place. So that shiny stuff that's growing on the copper is actually silver powder. Same thing here. If there is a reaction, the solid metal kicks out the aqueous metal, the one that's an ion in solution. If there is no reaction, kind of like I told the joke in chemistry class, I got no reaction. So, for instance, with this one, the zinc didn't have enough power to come over and kick the magnesium out. Therefore, the magnesium is more reactive. And now that I've kind of shown you some of these, I can't give them all away to you because, again, it is a lab. So, I did 1, 2, and 4. You're going to have to figure out what 3, 5, and 6 are. Now, arrange lead, magnesium, and zinc in order of their activities listing the most reactive first and so this is kind of like how you're figuring out teams when you're seeding for a tournament 
So, for instance, if you have, you have one fo three football teams, and the three football teams, this team and this team played each other, but uh, this team didn't play that team, and you're trying to put them in order of how you think that they're going to go. Well, magnesium beat zinc, and then we have to see where the zinc in number three here, if the zinc won or the lead won. So we'll go ahead and do that one. Since there was a mossy growth there, that means that the zinc beat the lead. So even though magnesium hasn't been tested with lead, zinc beat lead, magnesium beat zinc. So it stands to reason that when you're putting these in order that the magnesium is the most active, the zinc is the second most active, and then the lead is bringing up the rear. So you may not have tested magnesium and lead, but we can infer because magnesium beat zinc, zinc beat lead, that that's the order that it's going to go in. Now, you'll have to do number five and number six, and then on the back side, there's a few more of these. So we have this one, this one, and this one. So we're going to compare copper, silver, and zinc. And again, you do the same thing. You look to see, well, copper beats silver, so obviously copper is higher than silver. And then we have hydrogen and copper and hydrogen and zinc. So we're going to have to look at those when you figure out five and six and figure out the order for those ones. And then magnesium, hydrogen, and silver. Again, we're ignoring the anions, the second half of the compounds that are aqueous, because we're just trying to compare the metals and hydrogen. And then we're going to arrange all five of the metals, excluding hydrogen, in an activity series listing the most active first. So using your table from here, here, and here, you put the five metals, so the magnesium, silver, copper, let's get them all here, the silver, copper, lead, zinc, and magnesium in order. So we're excluding hydrogen. Now, number five here, on the basis of the reactions, how come we can't fix hydrogen? It has nothing to do that hydrogen doesn't react. Hydrogen does react. And in fact, they've made metallic hydrogen. It takes extreme conditions and extremely cold. But yes, hydrogen can be made into a metal. It just normally isn't considered a metal when we see it around in our normal everyday life. And you have to test hydrogen with one of these metals in order to figure out where it goes. And what I'm asking is what metal would you need to test it with in order to fit it in that activity series? And then two questions that you got to think about. So inquiry questions. According to results, would silver react with sulfuric acid? Why or why not? And according to results, would magnesium react with sulfuric acid? Why or why not? Well, thanks again for watching another episode of Kicked Up Chemistry with Professor Leonard and figuring out single replacement reactions and the activity series.